What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, honey, and we are down here to talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta and then Mary to Medicine. Um, Real House of Real Housewives of Atlanta seemed like it was like a filler episode, so we probably won't be too long. Um, I think it was like they got right to the point. They were things were clear. Things were made clear. Hold on, I don't. I have a pro, you know. I really have. I'm about to call the city people and the park people because. Y'all are taking up all the parking spaces. It's so weird. It is so weird. They'd be parked all, you know, like across the parking. This He got this contraption. I don't know what it is. I don't know what this contraption is. But he got it parked across two parking spaces. Get your thing and put it somewhere else. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know you stop by, y'all. We're under the tree, girl. We are under the tree. Hold on. Let me back up one more time and get in here right. And get in and get in here right. All right. I was going to go to Starbucks, but I was like, never mind. All right. So let's talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta. I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. I had a really good weekend. Um... On Friday, I was um, with these group of women who um, were talking about, you know, just it's time for women to start exchanging currency between each other more um, because more most women are doing the right thing when they get money, money into their hands. So that's what we were talking about. And that was really good. And then Sunday we had like a like a closeout ceremony of it. It was actually pretty good. Um, learned a lot. Learned a fucking lot, girl. And also, what else did I do? I relaxed um, mostly. Yeah, and I ran a few errands, and that's it. Went to therapy, and that was out, that was about it. This shirt, I I love. You know, I love red. Okay, shout out to red. But it's like too big. No, it's not. I'm not losing weight. It's I bought it big. I have um probably like you know I want I want to say probably eighty five percent of the women in the world I have body image issues, and sometimes I'll buy clothes that I think I'll buy a size that I think I am right, but and then it'll come and it'll be too big and it won't fit right. Like all this room in the in the you know under the arms and stuff like that is just too much for your girl. Anyways. So I should have got a size, one size smaller. So let's talk about what happened on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Here we are. So Candy and Kenya, they go on a play date. That was really cute with um, Blaze. When I tell you, I think Blaze is one of the cutest babies on TV. I think she is one of the, I mean, she, I think she is so adorable. She is adorable. She just reminds me of just like, just like a little, I don't know what to, how to describe her, but she's just so cute. She is adorable. She looked just like her mama. She is adorable. Candy is talking to Kenya about um, Marlo, the situation, um, you know, because Marlo invited everybody to go to Blue Ridge, right, in the mountains in Georgia. So um, Candy was telling Kenya that you can't allow Marlo to deter you from, you know, having fun with the girls. She told her about her kicking the nephews out. You know, Candy will tell it, honey. And I love that Marlo had that candle that said gossip, good vibes and gossip. It's definitely gossip. It's definitely gossip, girl. (laughs) I'm telling you, did you see us on page six? (laughs) The girls know Candy be running her fucking yap. Okay, they should call her Candy Yaps instead of Candy Yams. Girl, Candy Yaps. Instead of speak on it, that's what it needs to be called. Candy Yaps. It'd be yapping her mouth. Every time something leak, everybody's always looking around because she done flapped her mouth to the candy coated click and they done went down to page six. Girl, we know you for your works, Candy. 
That's why Marlo gave her that candle. That was hilarious. It was perfect. She says that, you know, she told the nephews to get the F out and that what she's doing could be adding to their trauma. You know, they're already, we've already talked about that. We'll talk about it a little more later. Kenya was talking about how she's having issues with her shipping. Most of her stuff is coming from China. So, you know, during, you know, we are still in a panorama this weekend. I was at the grocery store and I was like, don't nobody wear a mask anymore. I'm going to be wearing masks. And it's so funny because when I look at images from China or Asian countries where they are wearing masks, a lot of people wear masks in public. You see some people wearing masks, some people wearing masks. I say, I'm going to be like the Asian folks because I'm going to be wearing my mask. I don't give a damn. And I'm still spraying my grocery cards. And I think everybody in food service need to be having masks on permanently, indefinitely, forever. That should be a requirement. And I and when I think about how you, all your little spit is going on my food as you're talking to me or walking, walking with my food and you're talking to, to your friends and Haha, girl, and all your little spit is going on my food. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. So. Everybody need to have masks on. But anyways, Ken, Kenya was having issues getting her stuff shipped. Um, and so she's not able to, I guess, fulfill some, you know, agreements that she was having. Um, and she was like, see, Candy, you get it. You get it. So she said she hired her a COO and she's going to get her a team together. You can't do all this by yourself. So, um, you know, Kenya is, you know, on the move. Okay. Sheree, they said something about the jogger design. She said how the drawstring needs to be on the inside because the girls are getting the BBLs. And so their waists are small and their asses are super big. So they're not going to need to bring in the waist. So the drawstring needs to be on the joggers. Candy and Ace, what was they doing? Oh, they were playing, um, she was shooting a little gun, little um, balls, little Nerf ball things at Ace. He was cute. He called it thank you when he walked away. But anyways, Candy was in there with, I guess, her assistant. I didn't see the um, the name on the bottom, but Candy was like, "How? why do I got to wear, take a bathing suit? Girl, because you might get in the hot tub. <laughs> right, that was funny. You might get in the hot tub. So she calls Marlo and tells Marlo that Kenya's not coming. And Marlo says, well, we'll survive without her. And that was the end of that. Um, Marlo was, um, Marlo's at her house with her sister, Crystal. (sighs) Girl, when, when Candy said that them, that they were in a two bedroom and then she said, well, they moved to a three bedroom. It's still four toddlers and two teenagers. That's six motherfucking people. That's seven people in a three bedroom house, a three bedroom apartment. I really, 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 really hope that there is a man there. I really hope that there is another adult there with that lady because that ratio is crazy. That ratio of seven kids to one person, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I saw this woman on um, Instagram over the weekend, 38 years old, nine nine kids, eight eight of them are alive. And she, um, she looks good, but she has a husband. Okay. She got a man there. Okay. With them, with them eight kids, girl, she's 38 years old. I think the first kid was, I think she had about 17, but girl, you got, you got seven kids over there and one person, Marlo. Although I understand, like, I understand like, okay, look, you took this on to Sheree's point about Marlo. You took this on. This just happened out of the blue. It was something. It's like, it's literally like every little movie where something happens to the mother of the children and they got to go stay with the rich aunt who lives this flamboyant life and has this great single life and all of a sudden has to take care of her nephews. Like Quad is doing the same thing, stepping in, but I understand like while you can't do that and there and then like on on some real shit parents have to be told you can't do that so what Marlo's doing yes it 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 could be adding it might be adding to their trauma like the abandonment and get them out and feeling rejected that's like a rejection thing um she had she just has to be told like okay that's not how you want to do that because parents do the same thing. It doesn't matter. It's an adult. I, 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 that's something. It's an adult taking care of children. Parent, auntie, whoever, foster, adoptive, 
whoever, an adult taking care of children who's lived a life centering themselves and everything, all of a sudden with two teenage boys having their own personalities. And that's like, you know, it, it lends to the idea of why teenagers don't, it's hard to get teenagers adopted because they have their own personalities and they're growing into their independence. So they're less likely to kind of listen to you and, 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 and listen to the guidance that you have for them. So it, it could be hard. That's why I say, I understand what she's saying. What she's doing is not right, but you have to understand like, okay, this is something that came out of the blue for her. Like there's, there has to be something. That's why I'm like kind of giving her grace, even though what she's doing could hurt the boys. You know what I'm saying? But you got to say, okay, Marlo, you can't do that. And everybody's telling her you can't do that. So that's it. That's just people saying, okay, as an adult, when you have, when you're taking care of children, you can't just throw them off to somebody else because it can, it can imprint rejection onto them right? Okay, that's it. All right, so that's it. I'm not going to keep going. So her sister comes over. Her sister tells her more structure. What did I say last week? I think I think people who are adults, caregivers of children are learning that you um, have to have structure. There has to be discipline, structure. And then along with that has to be consistency and reinforcement. It, it's like, a coach you're coaching someone because at the game of life here's all the things that you're going to need to know because when you turn a certain age and you decide like okay I'm independent you're going to have to play this game and I need to make sure I'm giving you all the tools that you need to play this game I'm not, I'm not going to be able to give you everything because some of the things you're just going to have to learn on your own and that way you'll be able to turn around and teach somebody else that's how that's how this whole shit works so her sister was like, you need to provide more structure. You're only strict about their schoolwork, but you need to be strict about behavior. Because academics is not the only thing, right? The behavior. Let's work on the behavior too. Punching walls. You see the room was trashed. The room was trashed. But again, like the woman said, you can't do that. I used to do that. I used to do that. Okay, go do this. And I'm like, okay, they have a level of independence, but then you go back and check it and it's not done. So you need to go back and check it, right? You need to go, you need to go see what they're doing because they could tell you anything. Just like she said, they will tell you anything. I think a lot of people who take care of children, parents, caregivers, whoever, a a lot of adults who take care of children say, yes, you, you think, okay, they're old enough. I'm going to tell them to clean their bathroom. They come out and they say, we clean the bathroom and you go in there and it's not clean. It's not clean, clean. Right. So you got to say, okay, you got to do this. You got to do that. So she's not going back and checking. I had to learn that too. I had to learn that too. So it, it is what it is. Right. How do you adjust? It's different because um, Marlo says that she, when her sister, when she found out her sister was in foster care, her mother must have been a, a pistol starter, honey. Um, <laughs> shit. When she found out her, the sister was in foster care, she went and got her sister at 14. I think Marlo might have been 28 at the time, right? Because she said they're four, she's 14 years older than her. 28, yeah. That's, I think that's, yeah, that's 28, girl. Only thing I know how to count is money. <laughs> anyway, um, but no, Marlo was like, no, it's different because it's like, first of all, it's one versus two, and it's also girls versus, you know, versus the boys, right? And she says, you know, but we're sisters. We're going to help each other. And she was like, I salute you for doing that. You know, um, she's like, I'm going to go up on the cab and have a girl's trip or whatever. And she says, but I do want to tell you. And so she asked her, how am I doing? Right. And I think that's another thing. What people who take care of children have to ask other people, like, how do you think I'm doing? Right. Um, so that you can get, you know, feedback. Don't think that, you know, everything. That's one thing about walking into taking care of children you have to remember one you don't know everything two you don't know this person this person has a different personality three how you were raised look at your state look at your state emotional state and all that stuff whether you think you came out okay or not look at how you were raised and some of the things you may be able to take from your childhood and some things you cannot you just cannot because it doesn't work on this child. It may have worked on your personality type, but it's not going to work on this person. This is a whole nother person. This is not your fingerprint. This is not your mini me. This is a whole person. Not you. (laughs) Whether they are junior or not, that's not you. Okay. So it's a whole new thing. You can't say mean things to the children. 
You can't say mean things, um, things that come out of your mouth. Marlo says she learned that from her mother. Her mother was ugly. She used the ugly words. She was just real mean with the mouth. Um, you have to remember they have feelings too. Um, and then you also have to tell children when you're dealing with them, because also they think that adults are adults and they're strong and they don't have feelings and they're this and they're that. So you have to also communicate to children. You have feelings. And even though I'm an adult, I have feelings too. Right. So the people can understand, like we are working together. This is not me, you know, monitoring how you feel and then not really, you know, feeding into that or, or, um, how do you say, um, parenting to that like personality type or what they need. So you can't really, you got to remember that you just can't say mean things to children. You just can't and put them down. And then, then Marlo said she could save it for Kenya. She gonna keep that ugly mouth for Kenya. I hollered. It was funny to me when she said that because you could tell, and it's crazy because when you, think about it. Marlo even said it. We have the same, basically the same wounds talking to Kenya. She said it. But Marlo's thing is you're not willing to get past it. Your thing with Kenya, you've created a relationship with Kenya and you want to keep it that way. You want your relationship with Kenya to be bickering and, you know, shading each other. However, when you start bickering and shading, you take it to hell. Girl, Diva saw something out of her but peripherals, honey. I have to see what's going on. You take it to hell. And because you take it to hell, girl. Hello. Yes. When you take it to hell, that's hurtful. You hurt. So I know just about, I can imagine what she'd be saying to them boys. But that's the thing. You cannot do that. That's that's one thing you have to learn. Like when you have when you're taking care of children and you start parenting in the way that your parents parented you, you have to remember what you didn't like about how your parents raised you. And you have to make a conscious effort not to do it again, because you might you probably will fall into those patterns because that's all you knew. Like you saw an adult raise a child. You were the child. So, okay, let me do what I saw my mom or dad do or whoever took care of me. I'm going to do what I saw them do. But you have to remember what you didn't like right? What worked for you, you may not be able to do that for this person. You may not be able to talk to your nephews the way your mom talked to you because you do talk to other people in that same way. And it's really odd that at 45 years old or 46 years old, however old Marlo is, she has the awareness that your mother talked to you like a fucking dog. You hated it. You save it for Kenya. You prop, you talk to your nephews mean. You have an awareness that it hurts you, but somehow, some way, that's how, that's just how you were raised. So you don't feel like you need to, because you turned out okay. So you feel like you don't need to adjust that. You do. Otherwise, you're going to get people around you who don't want to be around you, who are not going to listen to you, who are not going to respect you. And that's just what's going to happen. Sheree and, um, oh, they're getting ready to go up to the mountain. Sheree broke her toe. Um, the way she described it, bitch, why did they, they play a cracking sound? That's a mess. Kenya's not coming. Kenya's upset because Marlo keeps calling her a liar. And then even in that, it's weird because it's like, that is literally toxic. And I, and I think so many families look like this where the mother the way that the way that marlo was talking to kenya at that table the way and then she was like talking over her just being disrespectful and then like turn around in seconds and say well i want you here how no you don't you clearly don't want me here because you're talking over me you are talking shit continuously and then you're coming around and then you turn around and say, I still don't believe you were sick, but I, I love you and I want you to be here. You, that kind of love is toxic and wherever you learn that from, you need someone to help you unlearn it. 
because it's ugly, it's disgusting, and it doesn't work. And I think so many people come from families where the mother, the father, the caregiver, whoever talks shit and then turns around and says, I love you. It does not work like that. That is a mind fuck. It sends different messages. Then those people grow up and get in relationships with people who harm them and then turn around and say that they love them and they think that it's normal because that's what their parents did. Girl, y'all got to stop that, period. And you see that Marlo is, is doing that same thing to Kenya. I was like, that's not good. And you can't do that. And especially you just can't do that. You can't do that to your friends. You can't do that to family. You can't do that to the p- children you're taking care of. You cannot do that. I love you. And then like talk shit to you and down to you and talk crazy. You talk over disrespect, disrespect you. And for kids, it's even more of a mind fuck because it's like I depend on this person for my survival and they talk to me like I'm a damn dog. They talk to me like I'm a burden. They talk to me like I'm a stranger off the street. And then you turn around and tell them you love them. Girl, no, we're not. That's fucking crazy. That's toxic. And I'm glad Kenya called it out. You might call it love, but that don't feel like love to me. It might have felt like love, but I had to unlearn that because I felt like I knew that it didn't serve me. And for children, it's the same thing. It's like, God damn, you talking to me crazy. And then you turn around and say, well, I love you. I want you here. Girl, hang it up. You can keep it. They bring the OLG food um, to Candy. Candy, you know, Candy, uh um, She was mad when they said you couldn't eat in the Aston Martin. Then barbecue. Didn't I tell you she had chicken wing sauce on her sheets? Barbecue sauce. She wants to eat it, be able to eat it in this luxury vehicle. And just like taking it open. What? We can't eat. Okay, well, we about to get. get. Yes, girl. That was a mess. That was a mess. You know, Candy needs to eat. So they got out of the car. They went and they sat down and they ate before they left. And when they opened the bag, I was like, okay, you didn't just have regular wings, like just some fried chicken wings. You had fried chicken wings with sauce on them. Sauce. I don't know if it was teriyaki. It was a dark barbecue sauce. I don't know what the fuck it was. Jamaican jerk. I don't know what it was. It was a dark, juicy sauce where you probably need to lick your fingers and needed wet naps for it and you want to eat well we can't eat in a car this ain't starting out by right already girl shut up moneta 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 anyway so they can't eat in the car sheree um and them call them they get on they get in the car they're on the way they call candy on the facetime and they were like, who's all in the car with y'all? They were like, Drew, Manetta, and um, Candy, right? And then they're like, who's in the car with y'all? I was like, it's me, Sheree, and Kenya. They was like, what? Kenya's there? I was like, no, child, Kenya is not here. That was cute. Um, They're sitting in the car. It's like, um, is Kenya going to come? And then they're like, you know how Kenya likes to make an entrance? She's going to come. She, You know how she likes to make an entrance. So they show the clips of when she went and she was dressed like Phaedra. And, and, and Portia was like, Phaedra, is that your bathing <laughs> Phaedra, is that your bathing suit? <laughs> Baby, we should have known Kenya was crazy the day she came in with them booty pads on and that fish, that net cover up over her ass with that fucking church hat on. Because from the beginning, she clocked. This bitch don't know whether she want to be a church mother or a whore. She had that church hat on, baby, coming through. <laughs> Kenya Moore is fucking iconic. It's iconic. Then they show Kenya Moore hair care, baby. I get a key every single time. I holler every single The way that Portia laid her ass on the floor and was hollering and screaming, that's exactly how I feel. Whenever I see boom, 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 yes. <laughs> Every time I see that, I think, can you act? Okay, y'all. This is this is the idea. We gonna come through Marlo's hair event with a marching band of our of my hair products, and they was like, okay. Girl, where did y'all go get the, where did y'all get the signs? Where did y'all get the drums? Who did y'all ask? Like, what is going on? Where did you get these people? And they agreed. 
girl, and can't and Kenya's cousin is right behind her, like do 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 do, and and Kenya walking into the door had the smile of the century on her face because she knew what she was about to do was fucking iconic and was gonna tear the house down. <laughs> Bitch. You know how Kenya likes to make an entrance. Anyway, it's Fatim, 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 Fatim. Is she coming? Drew said it doesn't bother her that she's coming or whatever. Yes, it does. You are so bothered with a face. Girl, I want to scrape all that makeup off your face. You look ridiculous. I'm sorry. That over ultra whatever the girl is giving, it does not fit her personality. That um, girl from the first season, she should be that. Like, she's too done up. Drew is too done up. It's too done up. I know, like, you know, first season, y'all be looking a mess. You don't know your colors. You don't know your angles. Then you get a stylist, but you too done up, girl. Did you see all that damn baby hair that was, girl, it's a man. I was like, look at Drew. You look like a clown. Sorry. Anyways, they arrived. They said for the rooms, they're going to do candles. I thought it was I thought it was great that Sonya is has an iFit series or whatever some type of fitness thing that she's doing. I have no idea what it is, but I thought it was perfect because she's the perfect person. Her or Sheree are the perfect people to do a fitness anything, okay? Um they give out the candles, devotion and delusional. That could have been all of them. Bitch, I said who who is it? Take your pick. It was Kenya. Good vibes and gossip was candy. High hopes and low expectations. Sheree goes, me, <laughs> bitch. That's a lot of that's a lot of women, honey. High hopes and low expectations. But y'all getting your high hopes with your high expectations together. Y'all do. Everybody's doing. Everybody's doing good. We doing good. But it's a it's a lot that's not. But it's a lot that is. She said, me, girl. She do high hopes and low expectations. Um, coordinated workout gear, Sonya. I don't know why Drew thought it was her. Girl, no, you are not working out. We know you're not doing anything. Girl, you're doing a few jumping jacks, a few jump ropes, and and run across the run across the floor, and that's about it. Um, repeat resolutions and wishful thinking. Drew was looking stupid, bitch. Drew, oh, this is for you. <laughs> I thought that was a cute game um, for the room. So they go pick out their rooms. They got 15 minutes to get dressed for dinner. Um, Mario. Who is Mario? Oh, Marlo. Girl, that's the way I write. Marlo says, yes, she needed a break and she's not ashamed. Um, I need to be the best that I can be. She was like, they were like, how long? She was like 30 days. They were like, dang, that's a long time. She said, but I thought your sister said she had a two bedroom. She was like, oh no, she just got a three bedroom girl. I said seven toddlers and two teenagers. But to like Sheree's point, you got to give Marlo a little bit of grace, y'all a little bit of grace. This is a person who is was selfish. I mean, like, and when you're single, that is the privilege girl. That's the privilege of being single. You can be selfish. You don't have to worry about no mother fucking body and now you have two almost adults who in their minds they're almost adult they're teenagers they almost grown right because we didn't told the kids they grown at 18 which is not smart but whatever and now you have these two personalities and you want to make it the best of them so you don't do structure she messed up that's where she messed up but now you know better okay i need 30 days to wipe the slate clean yes don't do that again you can't do a 30 day cleanse i mean maybe if you send them somewhere for the summer so they don't feel like oh i i'm i can't deal with it but summer breaks are how you do that right that's how the parents get a break some parents caregivers they're out to eat at blue ridge um they're going to do some gym mining that sounds fun um, Candy says that she's never been drunk. Yes, you've never been drunk, but you this, you this big old, big old, you a big old freak, right? And then Candy doesn't get drunk, but everybody else is drunk around her. That's how, where they were in South Carolina, that's how that Bolo situation, because Candy was sober and, and was watching everything. She knew what everything that was, how everybody was drunk, but Candy. I'm telling you, Candy does not give me freak. She gives me voyeur. That's I feel like voyeurism is her kink. And I also feel like um, 
being like a dominatrix, like telling people, giving orders, that's candy. Uh, the legs to the moon, girl, you in the front of the window and looking out the city, you can't even bend over right. Let me leave candy alone. Anyway, how my legs to the moon, legs, hips, and body. Okay, girl. Candy had nice shape. I was looking at her shape when she was in her bedroom, um, when she was packing. I was like, okay, Candy looks cute. She was sitting down. Her titties was sitting up. I was like, okay, girl. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you, girl. I just, it's just, it's just your personality. <laughs> it's just that personality, girl. Um, she said she want to be the same candy all the time. She want to be in her right mind. Um, Drew and um, Drew was talking about how Sonya said that she wasn't that busy. And um, she was telling the girls a story. And as she was telling the girls a story, Candy gets up and she goes um, to the, but she acts like she's going to the bathroom and she goes and gets Kenya. And Kenya says, I'm going to come because there, you know, there's an itinerary. So I'm going to show up. So she gets there and everybody's happy to see her except for Marlo. She's, she got a screw face on. She looked like she tasted, she bit down on a piece of garlic, honey. She face frowned up. She tells Kenya that she cannot, if she's not going to stay at the house with them, that she can't participate in any of the activities. Kenya said, oh, I'm participating. I'm going to be here and I'm going to experience the girls. But no, but I planned this thing. I went, I went out and I did a lot of things. And, you know, if you're, if I'm just saying, if you're not going to stay at the house, because Kenya said she's not going to stay at the house because she is going to bring Brooklyn. Brooklyn is not there yet. So they looking at like, oh, you're not going to stay. You're not going to stay in the house. And she was like, no. And then Candy, of course, Candy wants her girl to stay with her. But Candy, you fucked up last year because you had a problem with Brooklyn being there. Y'all really shouldn't have had a problem with Brooklyn being there. That, what y'all did to Ken, Kenya last year, that was so whack. And then you over there crying, I, you can, I could have brought my baby. You know good and goddamn well, you didn't want to bring Blaze and Ace. <laughs> Knowing goddamn well you had Bolo on the way. Girl, all that, oh, I could have brought my baby. No, that was guilt. Y'all was feeling guilty because Kenya brought her baby and Portia and Candy didn't bring theirs. Y'all was feeling guilty. That's all that fucking was. And you wanted to make her feel bad for making y'all feel guilty when you couldn't, you shouldn't have felt no way because you was bringing Bolo and the other one was going to fuck them. So what was you going to bring your kids for? Shut up. That's the shit I'll be talking about. Girl, I cannot stand candy birds. Anyway, so Kenya tells them I have a house. They love drunk Kenya. They are so happy. They were like, yes, we want drunk Kenya back. We had so much fun. Even Sheree was like, girl, you need to stay with us so we can have fun. Sonya shows up. She, you know, Oh, always drama with Drew. They said it's always drama with Drew. I holler when Sheree said in her interview, Kenya, stop acting like you don't know where your baby is, girl. You know exactly where that baby is. That's what Drew said. You know exactly where that baby is. Because she was like, I don't know. She's not able to make it tonight. Anyway, so when you think about it, you let me know. If you're going to stay with us, you can't participate in the activities. Kenya said, okay, I'll let you know. Sonya announces that everybody is going with her. iFit is doing this thing for her. And they have told her that, that she can bring all her friends plus one. I was like, that is really nice. So she was so excited to tell everybody. She was like, I don't want to mess up Marlo's event. But I really want to, you know, tell everybody about this. So that's really nice. So that's going to be a fun. So they have a trip. They're going to Jamaica. Um, she says, you know, you... This is what Kenya starts talking to Marlo because Marlo's like real adamant on trying to see if Kenya is going to stay at the house or not. She says, no, she's not going to stay. She's like, okay, well, you need to let me know. She's like, okay, I'll let you know. And, you know, if I need to, if I need to leave, then I need to leave or whatever. And everybody's at the table looking crazy. She says, you know, you always are telling me that I'm a hurt and I'm this and I'm that. But actually, Marlo, you're the hurt one. You're the one who's hurt and you're the one who's acting this way. And it's like it's unbecoming, basically. It's not sincere. You don't know how to be a good friend. Um, what you call love isn't healthy. It's toxic. And so then Marlo comes back around and she says, Kenya, we got basically the same problems. No, I, Mom and dad, you know, they both have the same they both have the same mother wound. Um, then she said, you know, um, we all have our issues. I got my issues just like you have your issues. Um, but if you don't want to stay, then basically you can't play with us. And then they, everybody looking crazy. And it's like, well, okay. 
so we'll see what Kenya does, but it looked like she was at the gym mining thing when, um, when they played the, um, for next week's episode. So we'll see how that goes. Anyways, y'all let me know what you think. I think what Kenya said to Marlo was on point. I think that with knowing that Marlo has an awareness that her mouth is just like her mother's and her, and she didn't like it. So she's going to reserve that for Kenya. Kenya's sent, telling her, you're not going to be able to have that relationship with me. I'm not going to allow you to have a relationship with me where you take it to the floor and we're supposed to be friends. That's like what you do on mad day, right? You wait. <laughs> if you're going to be, I'm, I'm not that type. I don't like to like, tell the stuff after like whatever happened between us happened between us whatever but some people have mad day and when they have mad day that's when they telling all the business all your business everything you've told them but in a just a bickering shady little moment you what you want to say oh you know bring up mark or something you want to hurt the person you try to hurt them you try to stab them you're not slap boxing you want to punch them in the face and she's just saying, basically saying she's not with that shit. So, you know, I agree with Kenya and Marlo, need, if she has an awareness of her behavior. She needs to change it if you want to have friends. And that's just it. Anyways, y'all take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace.